who will tell us about API Gateway, critical components of your digital architecture. And I'm really glad to have on stage uh, Wisnu Wardoyo, software architect at Dana, Indonesia. So, uh, hi. So hello, hi. how are you? Uh, I'm great, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we're really, really glad to have some uh, um, Indonesian speakers, uh, right, for this event in Jakarta, uh, okay. right, the, as a, representing really the local community. So yeah, I invite you to share your screen. Okay. And the stage is yours. Yeah. So I hope everybody can see my screen now. Yes, if you can go full screen. Perfect. Okay. The stage okay. is yours Thank for 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So today I will talk about the API gateway. Uh, the, this is a critical component of your digital architecture before that. Let me quickly introduce myself. My name is uh, Wisnu Wardoyo. I am a software architect for Dana Indonesia. Okay, so today the agenda we have uh, three things that we want to talk about. The first thing is the API gateway itself. What is the API gateway? Uh, how the concept? Uh, and then um, the number two is the common problem uh, you can solve by API gateway. And the number three is unlocking your API best potential. Okay, let's learn together. So what is API Gateway, right? So we often hear about that, but let's start with the premise that nowadays that uh, your API are driving customer experience toward your product or services. A poor API design will limit its usage and may result a significant project delay or cost of run, of course, uh, not to mention the business keep improving uh, its complexity and may affect your API delivery process. Okay, so to keep the child, to keep uh, deliver API faster, uh, many company has been implement microservice architecture lately. Uh, in this architecture, each uh, service or each microservice is responsible for each uh, business process. Okay, uh, for example, let's see this uh, picture of uh, online e-commerce. Uh, when the browser load this page, uh, the front end application will perform several API calls uh, to the back end of this e-commerce, start from the product uh, info, uh, the review, uh, delivery cost calculation, uh, possible discount uh, or a similar product or similar seller and many more. Okay, so how to achieve this one, right? So to implement uh, something like this, the easiest way is to separate its service using its uh, URL. Okay, when you are trying to uh, query the product info, you will uh, go to uh, your domain and slash product and slash uh, the ID of the product, okay? And to query uh, review, you basically go into the path of re review and uh, put the ID of it and so on, okay? In this uh, infrastructure uh, le level perspective, uh, before request came to your microservices, uh, you're gonna put some middle layer over there, uh, which is the proxy. And let this proxy decide to which microservice it should forward uh, this request. Okay. Uh, so the proxy take its job uh, as a as a forward the request. Okay. So at this stage of implementation, proxy behave as an API gateway. Yeah. So the proxy will behave like an API gateway. This is the simplest concept of API gateway. This API gateway solution will uh, resolve a common problem like authentication, authorization system dependency and red limiting okay this the proxy okay so uh, let's jump to the uh, second topic which is the common problem solved by the api gateway okay the first problem solved by the api gateway is authentication and authorization um api gateway also something you can expect to be able to perform as a middleware component a component that able to intercept an incoming request, perform its own process, and then decide whether the request can continue or not. Okay, with this basic functionality, uh, basically API Gateway often used as the place uh, to perform authentication and authorization. If you can see this uh, diagram, uh, the number one over here is the request, and the number two here is the API Gateway forward the request into the another system, which is authentication and authorization system and then decide whether the request uh, can continue or not. If uh, the request can continue, uh, it will forward the request through uh, the API gateway and going to the uh, microservices. Uh, of course, uh, we can bring the result from authentication and authorization 
into the request uh, and bring it to the respective uh, uh, microservices. Okay, this architecture will uh, give several advantages. Like uh, the first one, its system not, uh, doesn't need to implement its own authentication and authorization, of course, because the authentication will be set up here. And when and number two, the number two advantages is that when there is a change about how we authenticate the user, uh, the changes will be localized in a single place and not scattered uh, through the whole system. Okay, so it will be more easier to change the logic of authentication or authorization if someday you have a change over there. Okay, this is the, the first uh, problem you can solve by uh, API Gateway. The number two is uh, throttling and uh, rate limiting. Okay. Um, in general, uh, rate limiting and throttling have the same result, which is uh, make sure the number of requests not exceeding the certain criteria or count. Okay, let's say we have criteria for here that in one second, uh, the number of requests should not exceed 200 requests. Okay, uh, when we are using rate limit, API Gateway will uh, only accept the first 20 hundred, uh, sorry, the first 200 requests. Okay. So uh, if you see the uh, uh, diagram over here in the right side, the red limiting, uh, if, when, when the request came and it uh, reached exceeding the, the, the limit, which is 200 requests, it will reject it. Okay. Uh, during the rejection phase, uh, we can set the default response or default page. So uh, when uh, the request exceeded, uh, the API gateway will uh, not forward it to the a microservice, but uh, re uh, responded immediately with the uh, default response or page. Um, slight, slightly different with the red limiter, instead of reject uh, uh, next incoming request, uh, when doing throttling, um, any exceeded request will be queued into the next second. So uh, over here, the, 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 the request that exceeding the, the, the limit will be uh, queued and retried in the next second. Okay, so this uh, both of this is the the concept of uh, throttling and uh, red limiting. Red limiting and throttling uh, are very useful to make a sh to make sure your system keeps stable and reliable because in certain time or event, uh, you may receive unusual amount of requests at the same time. When that happens, without this technique, your system may collapse or no and nobody could access it. Uh, using this technique, uh, at least some of user or some of your requests can still process and the, the other, uh, the exceeding request will be, uh, uh, will receive the, the page uh, that uh, more, uh, the better page, I mean the better user experience. Okay, this is the kind of API protection. Okay, so uh, next, uh, the next problem uh, will be solved by the API Gateway is the surface prioritization. So in Current digital era, uh, FA consumer may vary from web, mobile, cloud, and also internal, or our uh, internal company. Uh, this FA consumers should have different traffic policies since uh, since uh, some of them have different prioritization, right? So maybe uh, the mobile with a higher prioritization than the internal one because this is the user and this is you. Okay. Uh, for example, in, in one day, uh, web, uh, mobile, and cloud uh, connection are stable at uh, 50 QBS. Uh, well, suddenly, out of nowhere, uh, yes, one of your uh, team in your company perform unbelievably high QBS. Let's say uh, 5,000 QBS. Uh, if we don't, uh, if we not apply certain uh, traffic policy, uh, API bursts like this from one source of uh, others might affecting the others. And the worst scenario, the app may overload and cannot process any API request. Okay, so how to to, to, to handle uh, something like this? Uh, we're using a uh, service prioritization. So almost the same with the red limiting and throttling. Uh, service prioritization not only focus on how many incoming requests. So in throttling and red limiting, we focus on how many, right? Uh, but the service prioritization also check of the source of request. Okay, the source of request. In in this uh, in this diagram, you can see that uh, API Gateway could, could set the different uh, 
different uh, traffic uh, policy for each uh, device type. So for internal, uh, it will be rejected immediately if it reach uh, exceeded criteria. Okay. So so the API gateway should be able to perform a service prioritization, as in some cases, uh, traffic from partner or system could uh, increase significantly and uh, causing the system overload. So not only from internal, but also from partner or user. So uh, this is uh, what we talk about is the device type, but uh, usually it's not only device type. You can perform prioritization for certain type of partner or user. Uh, let's say the premium user or premium partner may may be able to access higher QPS than uh, the, 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 the regular one. Okay, this is the service prioritization that could be solved by your IP gateway. The next one, uh, the next problem is the system aggregator. Okay, when we are uh, developing an API, uh, there is a time when we need to serve, when we need to serve client, uh, when we need to serve client application with data that provided by a different system. Okay, let's say uh, Dana, Dana is the e-money application, e-wallet application, and I have an API to return the user data. Okay, user data could be name, gender, profile, profile picture. Okay, alongside with the user current balance. Okay, uh, over here the system, uh, the profile system will uh, will hold the name data, gender, and profile picture, and account system will, will hold the user current balance. So when we see uh, this image, the API is provided by a profile system, then the Profile system will call account system to get the user balance. Uh, there are several downsides from this API design. Uh, the first one is uh, the profile system will to the, the profile system will to depend on the account system. If the account system down, uh, the the result of profile system might not uh, expected. Okay, or maybe it will return the same error. Okay, another one is uh, if there are more API or more API provider that need to get the balance, they need to connect with the account system and causing the duplicate code everywhere. So with the system aggregator, uh, with the API gateway as a system aggregator, instead of a profile system calling this account system, API gateway could call the uh, both of service at the same time and aggregate the result into the single response. Uh, this kind of technique, uh, also help you to unify the, the 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 text type behind the API gateway. Okay, uh, so for example, the the profile system over here uh, protocol using uh, HTTP and will return uh, XML, and the account system here using RPC. So the API gateway should be able to 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 connect to both of them and then uh, assemble the result uh, in JSON as a request from browser. So vice versa, if the client need the uh, uh, need a response in XML, uh, API Gateway could, could do the same thing and then assemble the result in XML. So that's the system aggregator. So uh, there are, uh, there is uh, several uh, things that uh, you can solve by API Gateway, start from the authorization, uh, at limiting, throttling, service prioritization, and system aggregator. So uh, the next uh, topic is about uh, how to unlock your API uh, base potential, okay? Um, aligned with the topic, uh, API Gateway is the critical component of your digital architecture by meaning that by implementing the API Gateway, uh, basically you are one step closer to the API management architecture. So what is API management? Okay, so API management is uh, the place that you can safely and securely publish APIs that developer can find and use to deliver the business value. So this is the API management, okay? So if you see the API management over here, the box over here, uh, you can see there are three components, the minimal component, which which is the first one is API gateway. The second one is the developer portal, and, and then we have a monitoring system over here. Um, okay, let's, uh, we, we already talked about the uh, API gateway, but uh, I need to add something in uh, API gateway. Uh, if we know, uh, if, if we will learn already about the API Gateway. So basically, API Gateway is the place where we can enforce the policy. We can we can put the policy of a dev, not in the client, not in the uh, inner API. So 
This is the outer APIs and inner APIs, and this is the API gateway, the place you can enforce policy. The policies are uh, are the thing we just talked before, uh, which which are the traffic management, uh, the security enforcement, and API governance. Okay, so let's talk about the the, the security enforcement that may benefit you, uh, benefit and unlock your API based potential. Um, this is the security enforcement. So nowadays uh, we will. Uh, uh, we have a several uh, client over here. The when they connect to our service and they call our API, the first layer uh, that we recommended to you is the uh, anti DDoS. So this is the additional service uh, which protect you from your uh, from unwanted requests which could float your entire service and shut it down. So this is the anti DDoS, the first layer that should be uh, in your uh, API. Uh, gateway. So uh, the second layer is the CDN. Uh, so CDN is a content delivery network, not only for delivering the static content. Uh, CDN also able to 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 choose uh, closest or fastest route from customer device to your server, which causing significant cut in API time cost. Okay. The the third layer is the bot mitigation. Uh, bot mitigation or detection. This layer will help you to identify which anomaly which uh, within your request that possibly caused by both. So sometimes the API, uh, the request looks normal, it's, but sometimes it uh, has a, some pattern that uh, keep repeating again and again. Okay, so this system could accept, reject or challenge the incoming request. And the when, when the challenge came, user can force to perform some tasks to verify whether they are human or not. Uh, you can choose zebra cross and uh, Traffic light or something like that. Okay, the last layer uh, of uh, of the API security enforcement is uh, WAV or uh, Web Application Firewall. Uh, so this layer will analyze the incoming request through your uh, HTTP and HTTPS and applies a uh, configured uh, firewall rules to identify and filter out the malicious web traffic. So because we are using API, most likely using web. Uh, web application firewall for, could uh, could have some uh, uh, policy or rules over there you can uh, apply and uh, analyze the traffic. So that's the API gateway and security enforcement. The next one we want to talk about the development portal. Um, so there are three main features of development portal. The first one is self service. The next one is uh, Second one is API design, and the third one is API catalog. Okay, so self service. What is self service? Self service is, uh, yeah, self service basically, literally, yeah. So user can uh, register uh, by their own uh, and uh, have a user management, have the user roles, uh, can perform a bug report, and can can do uh, many things. Right? Can invite people to join, can have a team, uh, something like that. This is self service. The, the next one is the API design, okay. The API design is uh, when when we can uh, design and maintain the API lifecycle, uh, perform the API integration, uh, publish the API, and API sandboxing. Okay, sometimes we maybe need uh, uh, something that we can test our API to test our API, uh, like uh, a mock the result and uh, etc. Okay, mock the result and. Yeah, to test it basically. And then the next one is uh, API catalog. This is the place that uh, not only developer, but business or product team can find uh, uh, the API we already uh, developed. So uh, this is a very, very crucial thing. Sometimes uh, we, we we ended up with uh, creating duplicate API, uh, which already created by different team because our team may be so big. And we create a duplicate API. Then, uh, without this API catalog, maybe we, we end up we ended up in this same uh, situation. Okay. And the last one is the monitoring. Okay. Like uh, what is uh, stated here, the monitoring goal is uh, always money. Uh, it's uh, always beginning with the data capturing, where the data here could be anything: the location, the device type, the internet provider, the IP address. Even uh, could be more personal, like a uh, phone number, uh, gender, uh, address, your contact list, your clipboard, 
It's a very personal thing, right? So those data are uh, new oil this time, okay? Those data are new oil. It will be processed by the big data processor. Uh, the result of this data is the information which useful uh, to make a business decision. Uh, for example, if uh, uh, eighty percent of your user are buying product with a value less than thousand uh, dollar, I think selling a product that uh, less than thousand uh, dollar will be better than uh, higher than that. Or maybe the majority of a uh, user life at a urban area, the business will sell a product. I think the business will uh, will sell the product uh, which is uh, suitable for those area. Okay, and the last one uh, after. Uh, by the business uh, decision is getting clear. Uh, monetization is uh, the end of goals. Okay, uh, but how we can monetize the API? Okay, of course, uh, using the monitoring itself. Since we treat the API as a product, so consuming our API means consuming our product. At some point, uh, user can only consume those API if they pay some uh, money. Okay, they will pay some money to access uh, some API. It is a uh, monetization basically. Of Okay, so uh, to wrap up uh, of this session, uh, the, the recommendation is over here. Uh, use an API gateway for all API. So uh, strongly recommended you to use uh, API gateway over here. The endpoint protection is essential. Uh, the red limiting, the, the authentication authorization is uh, very, very essential for your API. An API gateway alone is not enough. Uh, unit analytics monitoring, uh, developer support, and governance. The third one is treat your uh, API management as a product. Uh, staff and operate it uh, as, long, as a long-term capability for your organization because it will benefit you, not now, but uh, in the next uh, two, two years, three years, five years, okay? So the third one, if you uh, decide to use external party of uh, API management, uh, you please ensure to put a support process in place before deploying to production. Ensure that the support request and bugs report uh, don't go unanswered. Okay, so that's all. Uh, thank you very much. Back to you, Mandy. I was knew we have time for uh, two quick questions. So the first one is like, how would you make a difference between API uh, gateways and let's say uh, the, the API management practice? What would be the difference for you? Okay, so yeah, basically the API gateway is only a component inside the API management. So if API management, like I said before, it has another tools like monitoring, uh, uh, monetization, analytic, and then a developer portal. But the API management itself, uh, sorry, API gateway itself is just, you can perform uh, like using, uh, how to say, engine x right it's just a console one it's a console uh, you can uh, access it and uh, modify it as a uh, 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 api gateway and it's not the it's not good for a uh, user experience i mean our the user is not only developer but uh, maybe the business team and the product team because they can see the the monitoring over there and uh, see their their business so the api management is the complete solution and one of them uh, inside that api management is api gateway do you agree with people who say API gateway just be just needs to be a pass through, no business logic into gateways? Ah uh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, the the API gateway basically when you add API gateway, it will add another layer to your architecture, which is another layer, another another time consuming. Uh, to know the business process in API Gateway, I will say I'm agree with that because the 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 business should not be in there because if, if you put the business in API Gateway, then uh, uh, API Gateway will be uh, how to say uh, uh, the time cost will be uh, more than uh, should be. Like uh, uh, what I just uh, show you before is uh, when we do the authorization and authentication, which is that is a business process. The, the gateway itself will contact uh, will uh, will call to the system that uh, uh, having uh, the, the the business process of authentication and authorization instead of implementing those uh, business process inside the API gateway. Yes, uh, that makes sense. Yes, that okay. makes total sense. 
uh, uh, we have we have uh, we have time for a, a last question if you if you um, if you agree. So, uh, to your mind, how can you help uh, people to understand the difference between API gateway and microservice gateways and how they connect with each other? Microservice gateway. <laughs> uh, okay, API gateway and microservice gateway. Um, so, from my perspective, from my understanding, uh, microservice is uh, something you say internal. <laughs> Right, it's uh, very internal on your data center or your system uh, architecture. Uh, I think API gateway is something that uh, can publish the API to the outside to the public, so the uh, the uh, public uh, application or uh, public device can access that API, which uh, which could not be uh, done by the microservice gateway. Uh, in my term, uh, maybe I call it that this uh, microservice gateway is a uh, API mediation, just just to put uh, some uh, just uh, just to put some how to say aggregating layer over there, so uh, no business process uh, whatsoever, and just uh, ag uh, aggregating the the system over there. So I think that's uh, my answer. We have, we have a last question for twenty seconds. Can the authentication process on API Gateway, if an auth process, so authentication process on API Gateway, substitute the authentication process inside API itself? Here. Yeah, it's supposed to. Yeah, I think it should be uh, replaced because uh, there are two things: uh, authentication and authorization. Authentication is to to check whether you are yeah, authenticate or not, and and then uh, authorization is after you authenticate, are you uh, how to say? Are you uh, you are able to uh, access this API or not? So. Uh, I think uh, both of this uh, functionality uh, should be should be enough uh, to cover uh, those uh, needs. So the other system, uh, the other microservice like product and uh, review or uh, etc., uh, they can use the the, re the response of those system uh, uh, to get the user details of session or something. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Thank, Thank you. you. And now.